Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In 2 Peter chapter 2, the Apostle Peter is telling his audience that a time will come when false prophets will arise. And they'll be very similar to the false prophets that we've been reading about in the Old Testament. And they will be trying to draw people's hearts away from the truth. Uh, they will lead people into a sinful life and sensuality and things along those lines. And they're just going to lead people away from the truth. And one of the things that he says about them is found in verse 19 of Second Peter chapter 2. It says, Promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. And so they would be promising the people freedom. Yes, you know, do what you want. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Perhaps they were... Uh, in line with something uh, similar to Gnosticism, which would say it doesn't matter what happens, what you do in your flesh, uh, it's the spirit that matters, and so you can do whatever you want in the flesh. Well, that has the uh, appearance of being freedom, and it kind of has uh, an inherent promise that in, in following this particular way, you'll be free to do whatever you want. But the Apostle Peter says, actually, they themselves are slaves of corruption. So while trying to live a life of freedom, of doing whatever you want, following every, following every desire of the flesh, uh, although it seems like freedom, it's actually slavery. Slavery to corruption. And most likely what he has in mind here is moral corruption. And he makes this statement, this general statement, where it says, for by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. And that's what we want to focus on for our devotion today. Because it might be that maybe some are resistant to uh, the Christian faith, maybe resistant to uh, placing their faith in Jesus Christ because they don't, don't want to give up their freedom. Or maybe even after a person is a Christian, maybe they uh, might uh, despise the fact that they're not allowed to do everything that they want to do and, and they feel like they're cheated of some of the freedoms that they had before they came to Christ. What this text shows us is that really all of us are slaves to something. There is no one that is truly free. Even if a person was to follow the desires of the flesh and fulfill every desire of the flesh, always listen to what the body wants to do and and indulge in the things that the body wants to do, well, then that person is a slave to the flesh. And, and, and they have to listen to the body every time it wants something, and they become enslaved to what the body is always craving. Or if a person says, you know what, I'm just going to follow my intellect or reasoning, and that's what I'm going to follow. And there are definitely people back in the first century who had this idea, um, much like the Stoics and, and other uh, philosophical ways of life and and think, well, I, I'll just do whatever is reasonable, whatever uh, appeal, appeals to my intellect. Well, then you're enslaved to your intellect or to your reasoning. Um, if you say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live after money and chase after money and, and do that, well, then you're a slave to money. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, no man can serve two masters. You either serve God or you serve mammon, that is uh, money, uh, but you can't serve both. But the idea is that you're either serving one or the other. And so no matter what approach we take, we're always serving something or somebody. So it might as well be that we would serve Christ, that we would serve God. And as we serve God, we actually find an inherent freedom in that, uh, in the sense that, yes, we are uh subjecting ourselves to his will and in that sense we become uh, servants of God but in doing so we uh, remove ourselves of the shackles of corruption the things that corrupt moral corruption uh, fleshly desires uh, chasing after worldly things we become uh, free from all those things so that we can then become servants of Christ and and Taking that path leads to eternal life. Uh, the wages of sin is death. You want to work for sin? If that's what you want your master to be, 
Romans chapter 6, and that last verse there tells us, well, the payment you'll receive, the wages you'll receive from sin is death. But the free gift that comes from God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so we want to serve God. We want to be faithful. We want to place our faith in Christ so that we can receive eternal blessings and not be subjected to corruption, but be set up for and a point in the direction of eternal life. So today, as we think about how we are going to uh, direct our steps, how we're going to uh, go about our daily business. There might be times when we want to assert our our self-will or our own desires. Just keep in mind, while we're desiring freedom maybe in a particular act, what we're actually doing is enslaving ourselves to particular things. We want to stay true to Christ, look up to Christ, serve God through Christ, and be subservient to him and allow him to become our master and in doing so we will reap eternal rewards and we won't be subjected to corruption but we have the promise of incorruption uh, imperishable uh, eternal life so that's certainly the better deal so with that guys i do thank you for watching the video today hope you guys have a great day love you guys god bless